Our next speaker is Austin Jacobs. He's a partner at accountancy firm Prager Fenton, uh, which specialises in the music sector. Um, he's hopefully going to demystify uh, the different methods to assess the value of a musical brand and also explain the different ways in which you artists can be remunerated um, under licensing <coughs> and endorsement deals. Right. Um, so yes, so I'm a partner at Prager and Fenton. Uh, we're part of uh, Prager Metis International, which is why you've got the Prager Metis logo up there. Um, so I specialise in, um, in, in, in royalties, um, whether that be auditing royalties or, or, or valuing uh, intellectual property. Um, so I've been asked to speak about valuing an artist brand in the context of a fashion or luxury project or deal. Uh, first, I'll give you an overview of the typical techniques used to value intellectual property. Then I'll talk about the typical methods used to compensate artists, and then show you how you can use these valuation techniques to set the compensation levels. Um, I'll try to simplify things as much as I can. Um, it is a technical area, so, uh, so please bear with me. Um, so um, there are two techniques typically used to value intellectual property. Um, this is um, um, referred to normally, these two are normally referred to as the market approach and the income approach. Uh, these techniques are used to value all types of intellectual property, uh, whether it's a brand or a trademark or a copyright. So under the market approach, um, the typical definition is that the valuation is arrived at by obtaining a consensus of what others in the marketplace have judged it to be. Uh, in more simpler terms, if you know the value of brand X, you can calculate the value of brand Y. By way of an example, um, this approach assumes that if you know the value of, say, Rihanna's brand, you can calculate the value of Beyonce's brand. However, it's not quite as simple as that. Uh, firstly, the valuer requires detailed information on how brand X has been valued, in this case, how Rihanna's brand is valued. And as you can imagine, this information is highly confidential. Secondly, it can be difficult to find a comparable brand that is a perfect match. Um, in our example of Rihanna and Beyonce, uh, even though they may appear to be um, two reasonably comparable artists, their fan bases will, will be different. So because of these problems, it's, it's very difficult to pinpoint a single value as being a brand's definitive value. Um, often a valuation exercise will result in a range of values being given. Uh, the, the, the final figure will then depend on negotiation. The variable nature um, of this exercise is why the valuation of intellectual property is sometimes referred to as an art rather than a science. So the second technique is the income approach. This calculates the net present value of future cash flows. The future cash flows are a forecast of future cash receipts and future cash expenditure over a suitable period of time. Normally this period will be the expected life of the project. This exercise therefore requires the valuer to forecast the sales over the life of the project and the costs that will be incurred by, in order to generate those sales. Essentially, it's a profit forecast similar to one that would be included in a business plan. It will show the profit that is expected to be generated year by year. Then a suitable discount rate is applied in order to calculate the net present value. The discount rate is dependent on the rate of return required by the investor which in turn will depend on the risk associated with those cash flows. So the riskier the venture, the higher the required returns. In simpler terms, this method relies on a formula that calculates, for example, how much, say, a thousand pound received in five years time is worth to the investor today. So you may accept 500 pounds today rather than a thousand pounds in five years time if there's a risk that you don't that you won't receive that ten thousand pounds so we then look at the, uh, the typical ways to compensate artists the most common method 
is a percentage of the licensee's net receipts for a royalty. There could be one single rate in the agreement, or there could be more than one. For example, there may be one rate for domestic sales and one for exports. Typically, the rate for exports would be lower than the rate for domestic sales because of the additional costs incurred. Um, the royalty is applied to net sales. Uh, net sales is a, is a term that should be defined in the contract. This definition will <coughs> determine which costs can be offset against the income before the royalty rate is applied. A royalty can be combined with an advance or a minimum guarantee. An advance is an upfront payment of the royalties normally the royalties that will be earned over the following year. The advance will therefore depend on the expected sales. But it's worth remembering that the advance is normally non-returnable. So if the actual sales are not at the level that you expected, the licensor will end up paying the artist more than they would have done had there not been an advance in the agreement. If it's a minimum guarantee, the minimum amounts must be paid to the artist, usually on an annual basis. If the royalties in any one year are not at the level of the minimum, a top-up payment will normally be made at the end of the year. Instead of a royalty, there may be a one-off lump sum or a fixed annual fee. This has the advantage of certainty but there's the obvious problem of knowing at what level does the fee get set. Therefore, a royalty may be better in that it's linked to the success of the project. There may also be a sharing of net profits. This could be on a 50-50 basis or, or some other ratio. This type of arrangement is more commonly found when the artist is heavily involved in the project. The artists may be involved in the design process. They, they may uh, insist on a degree of control over price points, over distribution channels. So the project is therefore more of a collaboration between the artist and the licensee. If, if the artist is simply licensing their name or their likeness, then a royalty is more typical. Um, it's possible to see combinations of these different methods. For example, you may see a fixed annual fee as well as a royalty or, or sharing of profits. So the royalty rate is normally determined using the market approach. This means if you know the royalty rate of brand X, you can determine the royalty rate for brand Y. If the licensor, i.e. the artist, has a history of entering into licensing agreements, the starting point for negotiation will normally be the royalty rate that was agreed in that artist's prior licensing agreement. Uh, so, for example, if Rihanna um, is entering into an agreement, her advisors will, will start with the rate that was agreed the last time she entered into any endorsement. If the artist has no licensing history, then the parties must undertake research to try and find rates which were used in similar projects. Uh, these rates, uh, these, these projects must be for comparable licensees, um, compensating comparable artists. So artists of similar stature um, and the licensees are, are selling similar type product. Uh, so this research will then give an indication of, of what the rate should be. But again, it will be up to the parties to sit down and negotiate. Other contractual terms such as advances, minimum guarantees or the definition of net sales will depend on a combination of the market approach and the income approach. The market approach will be applicable as the artist is likely to insist on receiving similar terms as have been offered to other artists. Um, artists do talk to each other, so they, they, they can be aware of, of these terms. Um, the income approach um, will, will be applied because it's important if you're setting advances um, or minimum guarantees 
um, it's important to, to, to know what your projected profit forecast is uh, in order to set those advances at the correct level. Um, so I'll finish by um, saying that um, there have been some clothing ranges launched by artists which have been a huge success. Uh, examples um, which um, um, have been reported are um, Justin Timberlake's William Rast clothing range. Um, this has pulled in an estimated $50 million at retail each year. Uh, Puff Daddy's Sean John clothing line um, has reported revenues of $125 million each year. And Jay-Z sold his Rockaware clothing label in 2007 for a reported $204 million. But just as there are examples of successes, there are many examples of artists who have failed with their clothing ranges. Um, J-Lo is a, is a, is a high-profile example for this. There's, uh, lots of information out there in the public domain about how her clothing range was not successful. Um, therefore, it should be remembered that um, whilst celebrity endorsement can give you access to, um, to a large fan base, there is, there's no guarantee that it will be a success. So getting the design right, getting the product right, setting the right price point is still is still very important and perhaps more important than who your endorsement partner is. If a, a, a range fails, do you get do the artist get sued or anything like that? So, so does the artist get kind of sued if the if the endorser, the brand's given them money or the manufacturer's given them money to do things and it fails up just well, well, like goes, yeah? it's, uh, but it's it's very difficult to, to put these into the contracts. So if you've paid out in advance um, and, and, and the clothing range or the product range fails, that advance is non-returnable. Um, so the, the important thing is to try and minimise the advance and to try and... Uh, so, so, so exactly. Yeah, exactly. Link, link the payment to the success of the project, which is where you're talking about a royalty or, or profit share type arrangement. Um, it's, I mean, if, if you want to enter into a, into a, any deal with, with a superstar artist, then you're going to have to pay advances, minimum guarantees, um, this type of thing, that they will insist on. Uh, so it's, 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 it's your choice um, whether, whether you want to take on that risk. And is that the same with the image rates, like Rhiannon's when he used to pitch on it was Top Shop? Well, well that, that was a case that when, um, yes, there, Top Shop hadn't actually um, officially licensed the rights, or they thought that the, the t-shirt manufacturer had, had led them to believe the rights were licensed, but they were. So, so yes, you do need to license well, the uh, If I may um, yes. interject here, um, what, what happened is that they obtained the license from the photographer who took that picture while Rihanna was uh, shooting a video, but they did not obtain the five percent from um, from Rihanna from the use of the image, and that's where I think Thanks. So, um, short but sweet, sorry about that. Did you do a lot of evaluation? Um, so, yes, yeah, so I, I, um, I've, I've done valuations um, in the past. Um, I, I've done work for banks. Um, generally, if, if an artist... For loans? Sorry, for loans, yes. If an artist is launching their own, their own clothing range, uh, they obviously require, require funding. Um, they, the artists will, will have to put their team together um, so they, they, they still need to, to really liaise with, um, with, with a company, with a, a specialist company, um, or they bring uh, people from these companies in-house, uh, but then they need to find the money to, um, in order to, to, to spend on marketing, etc. So um, what, what, they have two choices. Either they can go for equity investors, in which case they have to give up a percentage share of the business, or they can look to obtain a loan from, from, from one of the banks. Um, now, now the banks will generally um, only lend against assets that they can secure a charge over. So the banks will not typically lend um, against um, the, this type of project. But what they will do is they may lend against the artist's copyrights, so their songwriting copyrights. So um, the, the copyrights are put up as security, 
and uh, the, um, the money that is, is then um, um, received from the bank is then used uh, to launch the, the clothing line. Um, so there the, the artist is taking a huge risk, uh, but, um, but, but if they've got a, a, a substantial catalogue of songs which generates a significant amount, sum of money, um, then they, they, they can afford to do so. Thank you very much.